Hello, this is Dr. Benjamin Norris from the Chemistry Department at Frostburg State University. Today we're going to talk about comparing resonance structures. The structure I'm showing on the right is the structure of phenol. Phenol is an aromatic compound and its resonance structures help explain its reactivity. We'll study the reactivity of phenol when we study the reactivity of other aromatic compounds, a topic usually considered in the second semester of organic chemistry. In general chemistry, once you learn how to form resonance structures, it was enough to count them up and sort of note that they were there. Now that we're in organic chemistry, it's important to learn that, not, that all resonance structures are not created equally. As an example of what I mean, consider the three resonance structures of the nitrate anion. You probably drew nitrate anion resonance structures in general chemistry, or resonance structures of ions and compounds similar. In the three resonance structures for the nitrate anion, the distribution of the formal charges looks pretty similar. All three resonance structures have a positive formal charge on the nitrogen atom and all three resonance structures have two of the three oxygen atoms with negative formal charges. While the structures are different, they are all reasonably equivalent in terms of which atoms have which types of charges. Organic structures are a little bit different, however. Consider the resonance structures for acetonitrile oxide. In these three resonance structures, you can see differences in which atoms end up with the formal charges. For example, on the resonance structure on the bottom left, the nitrogen atom has the positive charge and the oxygen atom has the negative charge. In the resonance structure in the middle, the positive charge is on a carbon atom and the negative charge is still on the oxygen atom. In the resonance structure on the far right, the negative charge is now on a carbon atom and the positive charge is back on the nitrogen atom. Because the formal charges are different, between the three structures. The three structures are not equivalent. You can also tell that the three different structures have different numbers and types of bonds to different types of atoms. In the structure of the nitrate ion above, there are two nitrogen-oxygen single bonds and one nitrogen-oxygen double bond in each of the three structures. Where in the structure of acetonitrile oxide, the number of single, double, and triple bonds between carbon and nitrogen and nitrogen and oxygen changes. These three structures on the bottom are not created equally. We're going to learn a few rules that can help us assess when a resonance structure is more important and when a resonance structure is not particularly significant for explaining the structure and behavior of a molecule. Rule number one maximize the number of atoms that obey the octet rule. Here is a structure of an ion that has, uh, that has resonance contributors and we can draw those resonance contributors by following the resonance patterns that we've learned about. For example, we can draw an arrow to represent what it would be like if the, lone, or if the pair of electrons in the pi bond moved over towards the carbon atom with the positive charge yielding this ion. We can also draw another resonance structure where we are showing the lone pair or one of the lone pairs on the oxygen moving in to form a new double bond between the carbon with the positive charge and the oxygen creating a third resonance contributor. We can evaluate these three resonance contributors based on the number of atoms that obey the octet rule. For example, the two structures on the left and in the middle are okay resonance structures, but they're not the best because the carbon atoms with the positive charges do not have full octets. The structure on the right is the best resonance contributor of the three and is the most important for explaining the properties of this, of this ion. All of the atoms in this structure have a full octet. while we want to maximize the number of full octets, carbon and other less electronegative elements can have incomplete octets in some resonance structures. We saw an example of this on the previous slide. Electronegative elements like oxygen and nitrogen need to have full octets. 
when we draw resonance structures for this imine, we could consider drawing a structure where it looks like we're taking the electrons in the pi bond between carbon and nitrogen and shifting them towards carbon to form a lone pair. This carbon atom would have a negative charge and the nitrogen would have a positive charge. Alternatively, we can shift those electrons toward the nitrogen, have the lone pair and the negative charge on nitrogen, and the carbon would have a positive formal charge. The structure on the left is not a very good resonance structure. It's not significant because the nitrogen atom, an electronegative atom, does not have a full octet. And nitrogen and other electronegative atoms need to have full octets. Remember, electronegative atoms want as many electrons as they can get. The structure on the right is an okay resonance structure. Carbon is allowed to have an incomplete octet. The best resonance structure, however, is the one in the middle. All the atoms have a full octet. And all the atoms, or none of the atoms, have formal charges, which leads us to the next rule, number three, minimize formal charges. For this structure, the acetate anion, we can follow some of our patterns and draw resonance structures. For example, we can draw a resonance structure where we're removing the pair of electrons between the carbon and the oxygen in the pi bond up to form a new lone pair on oxygen. This leaves an anion on that oxygen and a positive charge on the carbon. We can also draw a resonance structure where we're taking one of the lone pairs from the other oxygen atom and using it to form a new pi bond. The structure on the left is an okay resonance structure. For this compound, which starts off with a formal charge, we have minimized the formal charge. There is one formal charge on one atom in this structure. The same thing with the structure on the far right. The middle structure, however, is not a significant resonance contributor. Three of the atoms have formal charges. We also want to make sure we minimize adjacent charges, especially on carbon atoms. Here's a molecule similar to the first one that we looked at. We can use what we know about resonance patterns to draw resonance structures for this compound. We can take the electrons in the pi bond and move them towards the carbon atom on the left end of the pi bond. This creates a resonance structure like the one that's shown where the carbon atom on the left has a lone pair and an anion and the carbon atom closer to the oxygen has a positive charge. We can then take one of the lone pairs from oxygen and use it to form a new carbon-oxygen double bond. The, that lone pair is now a pi bond and the oxygen has the positive charge instead of carbon. The structure on the left is the best structure because everything has an octet and there are no formal charges. The structure on the far right is an okay formal or structure because while everything has an octet, there are formal charges. Those formal charges are not adjacent to each other, so it's okay that they're there. This structure in the middle is not a significant resonance structure. It has adjacent formal charges, and those adjacent formal charges are on carbon atoms. Finally, there is an exception that adjacent formal charges are okay when a negative charge is on an electronegative atom, like oxygen or nitrogen, and the positive charge is on carbon. Let's see what that looks like. Here is a structure of tetramethylurea. Again, we can use our knowledge of resonance patterns to draw resonance structures for this compound. We can shift the electrons in the carbon-oxygen pi bond up to the oxygen to form a new lone pair and a negative charge on oxygen, leaving a positive charge on carbon. We can shift one of the lone pairs from one of the nitrogens in to form a new carbon-nitrogen double bond. The lone pair becomes a pi bond, and then positive charge moves to the nitrogen. There's another resonance structure like the one on the right that can be formed using the other nitrogen. For simplicity's sake, I'm not drawing it now. Again, the structure on the left is the best one. Formal charges are minimized. The structure on the right is okay, it has adjacent formal charges, but the negative charge is on the more electronegative atom. The structure on the right is a little bit better because the formal charges are not adjacent to each other. The structure on the far right is also a little bit better than the one in the middle because all of the atoms have an octet. Thank you for watching.